Hello, welcome back to my channel, and yes, I'm wearing elf pyjamas on the 1st of November, because I'm just that extra. We're taking um, our Christmas card pictures today, which uh, you guys won't see because they have Charlie in them. Uh, but you can see that we are, we're into Christmas in this household, um, and it's going to take time to get them printed. So we're, d we're doing the pictures today, I'm very excited. I'm opening this vlog now because I've decided to take part in the Thousand Doors Readathon, uh, which is being hosted by Emma at Drinking By Myself and a couple of other creators. Um, and I think one of the challenges is to vlog for it, but I'm just going to combine this wrap up with the vlog for that because, as I've said before, I can't vlog at work. I don't basically don't have enough like stuff happening for me to do two vlogs. So we're just going to combine these together. Like I said, it's the 1st of November. The first door has been open since midnight and trying to avoid spoilers on Twitter has been a nightmare. Uh, but I'm now, I'm just waiting for my laptop to wake up and then we can open the first door together and decide on my first book of the month. Okay, this is so exciting. Right, let's see what's behind door number one. And we're off. The Thousand Doors Readathon is officially underway. Oh. If you for the Thousand Doors Readathon is five. And you can interpret this however you would like. So maybe you want to read a five star prediction from your TBR shelf. It could be a book that is number five in a series, or maybe any book from a series that has five books. It could literally be the book The Five by Hallie Rubenhold if you want to go down that route, or any book with the word five in the title. I've got on my bookshelf here The Five People You Meet in Heaven. You could read that. You could reread a book that you read when you were five, or maybe you could read a book that got recommended from a booktube top five video, like this one by Arena Reads, for example. I'll link to it below if you want any of her suggestions. It could be a Okay, so I'm already completely obsessed with the format of this readathon. It's so creative. Emma, you're so clever. Um, there's the two other hosts as well, which I'll, all of them will be linked in the description of this video. Uh, yeah, so the idea is that I now go and pick a book from my shelf that's got something to do with five, um, read that book, and then go back to Emma's video for the last section to answer a question, which will then determine the next book that I read. This is so much fun. I love it. Okay, let's pick a book. Okay, so this is my entire unread TBR. I couldn't obviously plan a TBR for November as I normally would, but I did pull out a few books that I would like to focus on this month. Plus I've got Oryx and Craig, which is the outward pick for the month. Um, but I am gonna try and keep this as open as possible because I would really like to learn to mood read during this readathon. Right, the prompt is five. I actually read The Five by Hallie Rubenhold in October and loved it, would highly recommend. Sorry for this background noise, by the way, my husband is showering. Um, so I think I'm going to go with a five star prediction. Okay, decided to go with a five star prediction, which is <laughs> getting caught on the clothes rack to my right. Uh, Clap when you land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I have read um, With the Fire on High and I've also read The Poet X and I adored both of them. I think I gave The Fire on High four stars possibly but Poet X which I read in October was a definite five star and I just I've just got this feeling this is going to be a five star read so many of my friends have read it and said that it destroyed them um who sent me this book oh it's from Simone as well so from one of my five star friends um yeah this is going to be my first pick for this readathon and I will come back once I've finished it probably be a few days there'll probably be another book or two in between then um and then we can watch the rest of that video and see where my next door will be it's still the 1st of November and it's much later now, which is why the lighting's horrible because it's dark outside. But I've been to see my mum today, like I said in the last clip, and we had a lovely time. I won't see her for ages now because of the lockdown that's coming. Um, and also because of the lockdown, obviously the bookshops are closing. Um, and we went to Marlborough, which is halfway between our two homes, and had a really nice lunch. And it was just good to see her, and it was just the two of us. And it's always lovely when, like, the boys are there, my brother and stuff. But sometimes it's nice just to have a bit of one-on-one -on -one time with your mum. Um, we had a nice time. She also gave me some money, because that's what she does quite often. Because um, she knows I'm eternally broke. Uh, and I was supposed to use it to buy some work trousers with and some of it I will use for work trousers but I also bought two books and I can't actually remember the last time I bought myself books because I was so spoiled by everybody for my birthday I still got books from then and I always feel guilty buying books when I've got other books waiting however these two books I've really wanted for ages and I saw this little bookshop it's called the 
Whitehorse Bookshop. Here it is. Uh, it's an independent and obviously they're gonna have to close on Wednesday. So I was like, well, obviously I need to do my patriotic bookworm duty and support an indie. Um, so I picked up two books that I wanted to read for ages. The first of them is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. We all know how obsessed I am with 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield. She's got two other novels. I'm not sure if this is the one, this is her second or third book, um, but this was the only one they had. Look at this glorious cover. Don't even know much about it except that it's historical fiction and it's Diane Setterfield, so I am in. So I bought that. And then I bought one that I really wanted to read for ages and I've seen on quite a few channels, which is Hamnet by um, Maggie O'Farrell. Um, I'm a major Shakespeare nerd, so this seems like a natural book for me to read. It's also this giant hardback, which makes me very happy. So yeah, I thought I would just show you my little uh, treat to myself. Happy Sunday to me. getting tired madam go on then ah ah <laughs> it's the 5th of November I'm exhausted after working all day I look mad lighting's terrible because it's getting dark now and I haven't finished a book but I have had an Amazon parcel and I don't think I've ordered anything I can't remember so we're going to open this on camera in case it's a gift, because I just think it's nice when people see your reaction as you open something. So let's have a little look and see if this is a present. Ah, oh, it is, it is, it is, it is, and I've just seen what it is. Oh my God, who is this from? Oh, okay. So um, Anne from Rooting Branches, who is a blogger who I will link in the description. Her and I connected a while ago on Twitter. She's so lovely, and I entered a giveaway that she ran um, during October. Um, so it says, congrats on winning the giveaway. I hope this book brings you the same amount of joy as it did for me. Thank you for being a lovely human. Happy reading from Anne. This is so exciting because it's Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Charlotte's going to be so happy I got this book. Um, basically, I won the giveaway and Anne sent me a message and said, which book do you want? And I was like, just pick one off my wish list. This was a really good pick. I read um, Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Uh over the summer, I can't remember which month it was, and loved it, and I'm really, really excited to get to this. So thank you so much, Anne, this has really, really made my day. Thank you. It's the 7th of November, and I have finally finished my first book of the month, and also the first door for the Thousand Doors readathon, which was Cat Friendly Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. As I mentioned in the clip when I chose this book, this was gifted to me very kindly by my wonderful friend Simone from Me, Simone and I. Um, I picked this for my first door because it's a five star production, and I was completely right, this was definitely, definitely five stars. Um, this tells the story of two teenage girls who don't realise that they're related, don't realise that they're sisters, until their father is killed in a plane crash. Um, one of them lives in the Dominican Republic and the other lives in New York City and it's about them discovering each other, um, the different lives that they've been leading up, up until that point and them connecting. I have to give this five stars because it was just so wonderful. It's written in verse. It's definitely my favourite of the Acevedo novels that I've read. I think I've read all of them now because I've read With the Fire on High, which gave four stars. I read Poex last, last month, gave that five stars, and this I've given five stars, but this is definitely my favourite of the three. It was just really powerful. Um, obviously some content warnings for death of a parent, grief, and also sexual assault. Um, so just be careful going in. But I feel like it really shows the anger and the rage that comes with grief really well. Um, and also the two voices are really distinct. I thought that was done really, really, really cleverly. And yeah, just the whole thing, I just ador adored it. So a definite five star from me. Thank you so much for sending me this, Simone. And let's see what the next door's gonna be. Okay, are you back now? Hopefully you're done with your book now. So I want to know what you thought of it. What star rating would you give it out of five? And on the next end screen, you're going to see four doors. Click the one that best represents the star rating that you gave this book, or if you didn't after the book, you will see a door for that too. Off you go on your quest. Okay, this is so exciting. So I gave it five stars. So where is this taking us? Um, is that working? Yes. Okay, where are we going? Ooh, so this is another, whose prompt is this? Welcome <sighs> to prompt two. 
So as you probably know by now, each of us three main co-hosts have a special way we are giving our prompts. And if you don't know already, mine are all in the form of memes. So I'm going to show you a meme and you just pick a book that gives you the vibe of that meme. However you choose to interpret that. I'm going to give you some suggestions, but you by no means have to follow them. So the meme for this prompt is... <laughs> I'm back! <laughs> Okay, so I've been and chosen a book, and yes, I'm sitting in front of an empty sofa bed. If you have been following me on Twitter, you'll know why. I don't really want to talk about it right now. However, I have gone and picked, picked a book. So Meg's prompt was basically about returning. Um, and so I've had a look on my book on my shelf. I don't read a lot of sequels, etc. But there is a book that I really want to read that I think fits this prompt. Um, and that is Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Because I think, well, I read um, Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I think this is the sequel, but I think they can also kind of be read independently. But this is me returning to Tally Hibbert and to a set of characters that I love. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I don't even really know what it's about, except that I'm going to be back with the Brown sisters and that is enough for me. So yeah, this is going to be book number two for me for A Thousand Doors Readathon. And uh, I'm really excited to get stuck in. It's the 9th of November and it's very early in the morning, which is why the lighting is horrible. But before I run off to work, I wanted to tell you that I finished, last night I finished uh, Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood. This is the pick uh, for my book club for this month. Um, it's the start of the Mad Adam trilogy, which is her sci-fi dystopian trilogy. I absolutely loved this. I've read it before, but it's been quite a few years. I think I was at uni the last time I read it. Um, and it's just so clever so the basic premise is that we're following a man a guy called snowman who at the open of the book is living alone on a beach and we learned very quickly that he is the last human left and there has been some sort of event that's wiped everybody else out um and the only other i, d I guess they count as people the only other beings that he has are called the children of crake and they are these hum humanoid figures but they aren't quite human um and he he for some reason is in charge of looking after them um and that is basically where where the novel starts and it goes back in time to before this event has happened um and it also looks at what snowman is doing in the present day and i just think it's so cleverly done um it kind of draws on robinson crusoe quite a bit um it's very much a discussion about um, environmental damage that humans make on the world it's also about the decisions that humans make and good and evil um, and it yeah it's just it's just so clever so clever the world that she builds is so real um, and it's set I, I don't think it actually says but you kind of get the feeling it's kind of a hundred or so years in the future um, and there are kind of two things that have happened to bring snowman to this point and the first one we find out about quite quickly and it's clear that at some point in his history there has been some kind of environmental disaster um and like humankind has had to start again because uh, there's things like new york is called new new york um and there's very much a um unbalance between the rich and the poor um it looks at things like um it's just, yeah, it's, it's, I don't want to give too much away because when you realise what's happened the second time, even though I've read this book before, it still made me glass fall out. I would say it might not be a book to read in 2020. That's all I'm saying about that. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. Also, I know I've said this before, like Margaret Howard is not the best at endings, but I feel like this one is done really well. Um, and I really liked where it went. So yeah, definite five stars. This copy was also gifted to me um, by She Is Such A Lawrence. Thank you very much, Lauren, for sending this to me. Um, I did have a copy, but this, these editions are just gorgeous. I've also got Mad Adam in this type, uh, this style of book. Um, and yeah, I've just really, I've really enjoyed the read this month. And hopefully the other members of the book club will agree. It's still the 9th and on my commute to work I have just finished Final Girls by Riley Sager. So this is my first Riley Sager book. I ju the only reason I picked it up was because it's the only one available on Scribd. I saw, I think it was Hilary at Melted Books talking about some of his other works. So I looked him up on Scribd and this was the one that was available so I grabbed it. Um, in it we are following a so-called final girl called Quinn. So a final girl is a girl, like the last person um, left alive after a massacre. Um, and she knows two other final girls and when one of them dies um, her and the other final girl Sam um, get together 
and basically try and work out what's happened. And that's the basic, very basic premise of the story. Um, we also move back in time to uh, the massacre that Quinn survived and we find out grad very gradually what really happened that night. And yeah, I thought it was okay. I gave it three stars. Um, having looked on Goodreads, a lot of my friends have given it four or five stars. And for me, it just didn't have that extra something. There was one plot twist that I didn't see coming that made me gasp out loud. I, and I like spotted it a split second before it happened. Um, and I thought that was well done. I thought it was well written. Um, obviously, the Final Girls is a trope. And so there are quite a few tropes in this. Maybe that's why I didn't quite connect with it. Um, but, you know, I thought it was good. It wasn't offensive anyway. Um, I'll definitely read more Riley Sager books as they come up on Scribed or if I see them in physical copies. And yeah, it was okay. It's the 13th of November and I'm at the end of a very long teaching week, as you can probably tell <laughs> by the state of me. Uh, it's been a really, really good week, as you can also probably hear. I am losing my voice. I took my first full lessons this week and just had the best time. Absolutely loving it. Uh, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some bookish stuff. I haven't finished any books yet. My reading has really, really slowed down, um, which I hate, but it is just it's as it is right now. Um, I've received a book earlier in the week and I've got three parcels sat here that I think are from Book Break. And um, this is definitely from Book Break. This is an arc of The Imposter by Anna Wharton. Uh, this comes out in April 2021, which is very exciting. We all know how excited I get about arcs. And this is a floppy paperback. We love it, we love it. So I'm just gonna read you the back because I request these books and then I forget all about them. Uh, so it says, Chloe lives a quiet life, working as a new newspaper archivist and taking care of her nan. She's happy to simply read about the lives of others as she files away the news clippings from the safety of her desk. But there's one story that she can't stop thinking about. The case of a Angie Kyle, a girl Chloe's age who went missing as a child, a girl whose parents never gave up hope. When Chloe is left on the brink of homelessness, she takes a desperate step, answering an ad to be a lodger in the missing girl's family home. It could be the perfect opportunity to get closer to the story she's read so much about, but it's not long until she realises this couple aren't all they seem from the outside. So yeah, this is really exciting. It's quite a chunker. It's just over 400 pages. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to read that soon and let you know my thoughts. And then I have already like partially opened these because nobody needs to watch me struggle. Oh, good. So Uncomfortable Sick Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Acho. Hopefully I will find out how to say that properly. Um, this is a book I'm really intrigued by because, and when I saw it come up on the list, I immediately requested it. So I will just read you a bit of this because I don't want to get it wrong. So, uh, in uncomfortable conversations with a black man, Joe takes on all the questions, large and small, insensitive and taboo, many white people are afraid to ask, yet which everyone needs the answers to now more than ever. With the same open-hearted generosity that he has made his video series a phenomenon, Acho explains the vital core of such fraught conceptions as white privilege, cultural appreciation and reverse racism. So yeah, he um, went viral um, a few months ago because he was posting on Instagram these videos in which he talked about uncomfortable uncom conversations with a black man. So I really can't speak at this time of the week. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to pick this up soon. Um, I think he was a, was he an American football player? Yes. No. NFL? Yeah, they're football, right? <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, he's now a Fox Sports analyst and the creative online of the sorry of the ongoing online video series Uncomfortable. I really should have filmed this at a better time when I wasn't so tired. Uncomfortable conversations with a black man. So thank you very much for a break. I'm really excited to pick this up, and this is a really nice cover. We all know how much I enjoy a good cover. Right then, this one is as usual I can never remember what I've ordered Ooh, um Don Delillo Delilo the silence I heard Emma talking about this from drinking by myself and I really really want to read it yes so this is like a dystopian I think it's really short we all know I love a short book yes just under 120 pages um and it's basically about um I think it's they're watching the Super Bowl it's super. It's super. Bleh, super Bowl Sunday in the year twenty twenty two. Five people are due to have dinner in an apartment on the on the east side of Manhattan. Then it talks about that. Da, da, da. In the apartment, talk ranges widely. The opening kickoff is one commercial away. Then something happens, and the digital digital connections that we have trans that have transformed our lives are severed. So it's basically about what happens when all communication between people drops. And I'm really really intrigued by that. I also love 
this cover. It's really creepy. There's something really eerie about that. So yeah, that's exciting. And another lovely hardback, so thank you very much for great. And then this one, last one. Oh, People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. Again, this is one that I've seen Emma talking about. Is this an arc? Yes, this comes out on the 21st of January, 2021. So that's very exciting. Followed by Millions, Haunted by, Hunted by One. I think this is about a social media um, influencer who is fake and somebody knows the truth and they're gonna reveal it, something like that. It doesn't say on the back. Um, but yeah, I think it's about social media and it's a thriller. And how many pages are you? Yeah, around about 350 pages. So that's very exciting. So yeah, these are the books that I've had through from Book Break. Thank you very much, I have been spoiled. It's the 14th of November, so it's Saturday. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon and I have just finished with my PGC work for today. You don't get weekends on PGCs, um, which I knew going in, but I have decided to stop now and enjoy the afternoon with the boys. But I have had an Amazon delivery and I don't think I've ordered anything, so it might be a present. So I thought I would open it on camera um, and we can see what it is together. Oh, it is, it is, because it's a gift note. Who's this from? Nope, that's the receipt. Is there a quick note? Ooh, somebody has sent me Macbeth. It's a little bit creased, but that's fine. Wow, that's a beautiful edition. Who is this from? There's no, there's no note in there. Uh, so I don't know who to thank. So I will put this on Instagram now, so probably by the time you're watching this, I'll know who it was. Um, but yeah, if you sent me this, thank you very much. That's a lovely little surprise for a Saturday afternoon. It's one of these beautiful, um, I think they're the Macmillan Library editions. A Mac Macmillan Collector's Library. And I'm actually just finishing up um, Macbeth with some year 11s at the school I'm working at. So that's very well timed. And whoever it was, thank you so much. It's the 15th of November and I wouldn't normally film on a Sunday but I have just finished my next book for the Thousand Doors Readathon which means I need to pick another one uh, which means I need to film so I thought I'd film a quick clip now. Firstly I have discovered who sent me this beautiful little edition of Macbeth because a second one arrived which had the gift note in it and that's Dracula by Bram Stoker. Again I just really really love these editions they're so cute and small and they've, they've got beautiful illustrations on the front and the back. And they're just, just lovely objects. But yeah, these have both been very kindly sent to me by Kat from Bruise and Reviews, who sent me the nicest note. I think it's pro possibly one of my favourite ever notes I've had. Because it says, I wanted to send something to say that you are smashing your PGCE, and I hope you really enjoy it. And it's just so lovely. And then she said, I have also sent Macbeth, but it wouldn't let me write a note from Kat. So Kat, thank you so much. It absolutely made my day. Um... Not only are these like editions that I really love, but that note is really sweet. So thank you for sending me these two books. I really do appreciate it. They're just, yeah, thank you. And then I've actually finished two books. So first of all, I finished Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, uh, which you saw me open a couple of clips ago because I won it on a giveaway. Oh, I love this book. So I read the first book in the Brown Sisters. I think it's going to be a trilogy. Um, Get a Life, Chloe Brown earlier in the year, I think over the summer, and gave it five stars, just loved it. So I kind of picked this up and I was like, well, I'm not gonna like it as much as I liked Chloe Brown, but actually I think I preferred it. I've given this five stars. This is about Danny Brown, who is Chloe's younger sister. There's three of them. Danny's the middle one. And she basically ends up fake dating a friend of hers called Zaf, who is um, a security guard at the university where she works. Um, they Something happens and it goes viral and they decide to um, fake date because he's also running a charity and to help them, they decide to fake date for a while. And then it's a romance, so you can kind of see where this is going. But I just thought this was so well done. And the same with Chloe Brown. The mental health rep is so good in this. It's dual narration, so you get Danny's point of view and Zaf's. And I just thought it was done so well. Um, the mental health rep is anxiety and depression. Uh, it also talks about grief, um, and it talks about that feeling of being insecure and not feeling good enough. And I, I just adored it from start to finish. It is most definitely an adult book. There are some naughty bits. And I feel like the sex scenes are dealt with really well. Um, safe sex is just a given. There's no like big discussion about it. It's just what happens. And yeah, I really loved it. And I've definitely, definitely given it five stars. I've also pre-ordered 
um, I think it's Act Your Age, Eve Brown, who is the youngest sister, and I cannot wait for that to come out. I think it comes out in like February or March, so I'm excited for that. But yeah, five stars, highly, highly recommend. And then literally two minutes ago, I've just finished Three Women by Lisa Tadeo, which is my buddy read for the month with Charlotte from Books and Bargains. This book, I feel like this is one I'm gonna have to think about for a while. I was in very complicated feelings about this book. So this is non-fiction. It was everywhere on booktube last year. Um, it was just everywhere. I can't remember if it was nominated for the Women's Prize or not. It was just everywhere. Um, and it's non-fiction, although it reads like fiction. And as the title would suggest, it's following three American women. And it's kind of just the story of their lives. So we've got one woman who um, is in a marriage where her husband refuses to touch her anymore. We are following a woman who, when she was a teenager, was in a sexual relationship with one of her teachers. And we're following a third woman whose husband prefers to have a third person in the bedroom with them. And it's kind of about their lives and what they feel and what happens to them. Loads and loads of content warnings for this one. So we've got rape, sexual assault, eating disorders, self-harm, suicide, death of a partner. Um, I think that's all of them. Um, there is a lot in this book and Charlotte and I usually read quite quickly together but both of us read this slowly because I could only really read a chapter at a time because it's so heavy going um, but I really enjoyed it and now it's over I'm sad that I finished it but also reading it was hard work does that make any sense just because it's so heavy like the reading the writing itself is beautiful it's beautifully written but because of the content I could only take like small chunks so yeah, um, it's also, it's worth saying this, it's very white, it's very white, uh, and I've seen a few reviews where people talk about um, how it's kind of white feminism, and I, I think it is, uh, rather than intersectional feminism, so be aware of that. Um, but yeah, it was very powerful, I have given it five stars, um, I'm not sure if I would read it again, it's, yeah, it's one of those, I'm just a bit like, eh, I don't think I'd pick it up again. So you might see this on un haul soon. But I'm glad I've read it. And as always, it was a joy to read with Charlotte. So yeah, those are the books I finished. Uh, Danny Brown was my Thousand Doors door. So let's see what my next book's going to be. Okay, I did see where it was going. So let's go with yes and see where we go. Door number three has now opened. Hello. Hello. I'm Megan, if you haven't had one of my prompts yet. As you know by now, all of us kind of main co-hosts are giving our prompts in very special ways. And mine are all memes. I'm basically going to show you a meme and you have to pick a book that fits the vibe of that meme. I'm going to give you some help in interpreting it. So the meme for this prompt is... No, I don't want to play any more games. I'm fucking gamed out. <laughs> I've had enough of playing games. Queen GC, Queen Gemma Collins has had enough of playing games. Okay, let's find a book. Okay, so Meg's prompt was a book with a game or some sort of game element or a character who's playing a game, something like that. I looked through all of my TBR and I could not find anything with a sp specific game. So I have picked a book, but it's got a slightly tenuous link. But the book that I've chosen is Passing by Nella Larson. So this is about a pair of uh, black women who um, were friends at school, I think, drift apart and then uh, one friend kind of reconnects with the other and she finds that her friend is now passing as a white woman. So I guess that character is pretending to be someone else. Does that count as playing a game? That's what we're going with. And I, like I said, it's kind of a tenuous link, but it's all I've got. So the, yeah, this is the next book that I will be reading, which is Passer by, Passing by Nella Larson. It's the 17th of November and I've got my weekly very exciting excursion to do the food shop. Uh, but on the way, I finished uh, a reread of Never Let Me Go by Kazu Ishiguru. And um, like I said, I've read this before, so I was rereading and I decided to reread via the audiobook, which I would really recommend. The audiobook's really good. I really like the narrator. Um, and this is a book I can't really tell you much about because it's one of those books where you kind of, things unfold very slowly and I feel like you should go into it without any spoilers at all. 
But the basic story is we're following a girl called Kath who is growing up in this very privileged boarding school called Hailsham and we're following her friendship with a girl called Ruth and a boy called Tommy as they grow up and go out into the world and discover who they are and what they've been made for and what is going on in the wider world and it's a dystopian um it's very clever i think it's beautifully done i always give it five stars because i just it's a very kind of quiet book but there's definitely a quiet power to the writing and just the way everything unfolds and you gradually realize what's going on i just love it i just think it's beautiful and it's heartbreaking it's about friendship it's about love and it's about what it means to be human and yeah i had an absolutely wonderful time rereading it five stars definitely recommend it's the 18th of november and i'm having a very weird fringe moment but we're gonna have to live with that also you can see my advent calendar just there yes i bought the ridiculously huge and overpriced well not overpriced expensive body shop one because it's 2020 treat yourself anyway i have just finished passing by nella larson um and i just want to say first of all thank you to book break for gifting me this copy um this was sent to me and it's a really beautiful cover i love it so this is set in 1920s harlem and we are following a woman who receives a letter from a childhood friend and she goes to meet her um and basically the ch the woman both women are black women but the woman the woman's friend claire has been passing as a white woman for years and has married a really really racist white guy um it's a very short book um it's about obviously race it's about being true to yourself it's about marriage it's about love and the ending oh my goodness i did not see the ending coming this has got such a twist on it um i really thoroughly enjoyed this and i gave it five stars i'm really glad i got to read it um and it's definitely one that i will return to i can see myself rereading this um so yes thank you very much book break i had a brilliant time reading that uh this was my third book for the thousand doors readathon thousand doors a thon why why can i not do words today uh so i'm now gonna turn my computer on get back to that last video that we had with meg giving the prompt and we'll see what the next book will be okay so i'm back on meg's video and the question is did you like the main character uh that's quite tricky because the main character in passing is a complicated woman. I think I'm gonna go with Kinda. Where's my mouse gone? There it is. Let's go with Kinda and see what we get. Well, hello, intrepid readers. Welcome to my little corner. Oh, it's Jean. That's exciting. Of Booktube. I hear that you're currently participating in quite the readathon, one full of lots of secret doors <laughs> and you've managed to uh, pass through into my little realm so welcome I have a challenge for you so I've been a little bit slumpy recently with my reading and I didn't want to set you a challenge that put too many demands on your time or page count or how many things you read instead I want to do something a little bit creative and hear from you on social media so if you manage to click through to this video there's something I'd like you to do. I'd like you to head on over to Instagram, or if you don't have Instagram, Twitter, and share with the rest of the readathon using the hashtag your books god or goddess. <laughs> so if you know me, you know I'm super into Greek mythology, but I'm not going to be prescriptive with which mythology you pick. But I would love you to take whatever book you're currently reading or have just finished, as that may be why you're here, and pair it up with a god or goddess or even just mythological hero from a various cultures, legends or myths. So for me, that would probably end up being the <laughs> Greek myths and say I just finished one of my favourite romance novels like Radiance by Grace Draven, I would 100% see that book as Aphrodite goddess of love. Okay, let's see what we can do. Okay, so I really like Jean's challenge, uh, challenge. I think it's really creative, but I have struggled with it because I don't read a lot of mythological mythological books. Uh, however, when she said about a hero, I had a slightly different idea. So I am stretching the limits of this challenge. And by the time you see this, I will have posted it on Twitter and Instagram as well for you to see. But I'm going with the book 
Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This is obviously just the dust cover because I'm actually reading this book at the moment. It's downstairs um, because I'm reading, I'm buddy reading that with Leanne from um, Literary Diversions. We're reading 50 pages a day. This is based on the real life event in which William Shakespeare's son Hamnet died at the age of 11 from the plague. Um, and for me, Shakespeare is definitely like one of my biggest heroes. Um, I love the plays of Shakespeare, I love the sonnets, I love everything that he added to our language and our literature. Um, I am a giant literature nerd and to me he's just one of my massive literary heroes. So that is what I'm using to slightly stretch Jean's prompt, um, but I think, I think it works. Okay, let's see what prompt number five is. I think this is the last door. Let's see. Hi, you reached this door because you just finished an Instagram challenge. Now I have a one more prompt for you. The word is spirit. So you can read it. Okay, so Lauren's prompt was spirit, which I really like. That's a really cool idea. I just struggled with it slightly because I read like most of my spooky books last month. However, she was talking in the rest of her video about how it could also be just a book that makes your spirit feel happy or that your spirit is drawn to. So I've gone with Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield for two reasons. Firstly, as you guys know, if you've watched my videos this year, I reread The 13th Tale by Diane Setterfield in August and just absolutely like could not read it fast enough. I just had that real like, that real when you're doing other stuff but all you're thinking about is the book that you're reading. Um, I haven't read any of her other work so I'm excited to pick up a second one from her. So I kind of, yeah, I feel like my spirit was calling to this book. But also it does have like a slightly um, otherworldly vibe to it because it's about, um, I'll just read you the, a little bit from the back. So it says, It's the longest night of the year when the strangest of things happen. In an ancient inn on the Thames, the regulars are entertaining themselves by telling stories when the door bursts open and in steps an injured stranger in his arms the drowned corpse of a child. However, hours later, the dead girl stirs, takes a breath and returns to life. Is it, is it a miracle? Is it magic? And who does the little girl belong to? So I think it's got kind of, you know otherworldly vibes to it and I'm really excited to read this. It's the 19th of November and yes I very clearly need to cut my friend which is something I've sought out through over the next few days but last night I finished City of Vengeance, Vengeance by D. V. Bishop. This is an arc, it comes out in February, at the moment it's saying 4th February 2021 um, and this was sent to me very kindly by Book Break so thank you Book Break. This is a book I was very, very excited for. I think I got it last month. I think I pretty much picked it up straight away because this is historical, political sort of thriller fiction. Um, and it says on the back, if you like um, CJ Sampson's Matthew Shardlake series, you'll love Caesar, Al Caesar Aldo and City of Vengeance. And as you guys will know, I love the Matthew Shardlake series. Um, so yeah, I have just finished this beast. It's 400 pages and also the text is really small so it was a bit of a effort however I did very much enjoy it and I definitely think if you liked Matthew Shardlake you'll like this this book um I don't know enough about D.B. Bishop there's not a lot online that I could find so I'm not sure if this is a debut author but it feels like a debut author um but yeah I definitely think this is an author that's got a potential to become like one of my favorites um I'm also not sure if this is the start of a series or not because it doesn't say um, oh it does actually say I'm talking complete rubbish comes a major new series so yeah there will be more of these books and I will definitely be excited to pick them up um, so we're in Florence in 1536 and it's basically a murder happens and the officer of the court has to work out what's gone on and there's a few like plots that weave together um, it's based on real historical fact and things that happened at the time I found it really interesting the only downside for me and I think this is because it's a I think it's a debut author. Um, there are a lot of characters, and obviously this is an art copy, so the um, final cover might look different. Um, and also in this arc, it does have a couple of pages at the front where it says map. Uh, let's see. So it says here, like, there's, I think there's gonna be a map here. But what I hope they also put in is a character list because my goodness, there are a lot of characters in this. And also sometimes they use that character's first name and other times they use their surname. And it just took me a little while to kind of get into the rhythm of who was who. 
However, it was really well written, it was really well plotted, it was well paced, um, it was interesting, kept me hooked, kept me reading. And yeah, I would definitely recommend this one and I'm looking forward to more from the author. It is the 21st of November and I had to start my day with a Covid test today, which was unpleasant. So if my throat sounds raspy, that's why. Um, I work in a school, I have developed a cough and so I've been to get tested, which was not my most fun way to start the weekend but hopefully it'll come back negative i'm not feeling great but hopefully it's just a normal run the mill cough cold thing and i'm gonna get you know hopefully i'll get a text message uh in the next 24 48 hours to say that i'm clear uh, but obviously i'll let you know in the meantime i finished two books yesterday and this is going to be a clip of two halves one of the books i absolutely loved adored pretty sure it's going to be on my favorite book of the year list the other one i dnf'd because it was just awful um which is my first dnf of the year um and i kind of want to end this clip on a positive note but i also always talk to you guys the cat's just wandering around below um i always talk to you guys about the books that i've read and the order i read them so we're gonna have to go with the good first because that was the first one that i finished so the first book i finished yesterday was hamnet by maggie o'farrell um i buddy read this with leanne at literary diversions and i always love buddy reading with her um this is historical fiction and it's based on the life and death of william shakespeare's son hamnet who died when he was 11 and oh, i was really hyped for this book as soon as i heard about it um, I'm pretty sure it won the Women's Prize this year. I know it's won a lot of prizes um, and it's been really critically acclaimed and there's been quite a bit of buzz about it. Um, I was excited about it as soon as I heard it, but I kind of held off because I have so many books to read. And then a couple of weeks ago, when was it? It was just before the second lockdown. So maybe three weeks ago, maybe a bit more. Um, I went to actually see my mum. We met in a little town that's roughly halfway between us. And she gave me some money, which was naughty of her. Uh, which was supposed to be for clothes for work and um, to be fair most of it I did spend on clothes for work but I also treated myself to this because I was just so excited for it and I saw it in a little independent bookshop whilst we were in that town so like I said this is historical fiction and it's basically following Shakespeare's family um, it focuses mostly on his wife who in this book is called Agnes she's mostly known as Anne Hathaway but there are historical records to say that her name was actually Agnes because in those days name spellings were very fluid Hamnet is also the same name as Hamlet, which is obviously one of Shakespeare's most famous plays and most famous tragedies. And yeah, this is basically the story of what happened. And I just thought it was stunning. It's beautifully written. Um, it made me cry. It's heartbreaking. It's obviously about grief uh, because this family goes through a massive bereavement. It is also a plague book, so just be aware of that. Like, you may not feel like picking it up just now. Um, but actually, I found it really interesting to look at the parallels between how they would have coped with the plague in Shakespeare's time and how we're, we're coping with something very similar right now and yeah I just thought it was stunning it broke my heart it soothed my heart it, it was yeah absolutely just everything I needed so yeah five stars then last night I thought oh I kind of feel like reading like a what I would call like a cheap thriller like an easy read bash through it in two days you know a few twists and turns bit of a shock da 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 fancy one of those so I was looking at my shelves and my lovely friend Charlotte from Books and Bargains gave me a big book gave to me a whole box of books when she when we met up in the summer at a distance it was all at a distance uh but yeah she gave to me a whole box of books and this was in with them <clears throat> and it was a book that I'd asked her for because she sent me a picture of some stuff she was unhauling I said oh I quite fancy that one and she warned me she's like this is a really awful terrible book I really hate it gave it one star I decided that I still wanted to read it and see what I felt and she was right and that book is The Wives by Taryn Fisher. This is the ARC copy. The ARC came out in April of this year and it's my first DNF of the year so I made it all the way to the 21st or 20th of November without a DNF and then this book. So obviously I can't talk about it as a whole because I didn't finish it. I DNF'd it about 80 pages but the basic premise is that we are following a woman who is in a polygamous, I think that's the right word, relationship with her husband. So her husband has two other wives who she has nothing to do with. Uh, she is known as Thursday and he also has Monday and Tuesday and he like rotates through the women during the week. Um, she knows nothing about the other wives and she, yeah, they're in this relationship. Um, when I DNF'd it, uh, she'd she'd found the identity of one of the other wives and things were starting to move and I think it's kind of like a um, You know you think this man is one thing But what if a different wife is having a different experience kind of thing? 
and it was bad. So it was poorly written, the sections that I read were poorly written, it was very loose and wobbly and I just didn't care about what was happening. Um, the main character also continued talking about the fact that she couldn't have a child and how that basically made her less of a woman, which is total rubbish and actually I found quite offensive. And then we had a section where she was talking about how she felt so bipolar in her emotions and it's just like, this book came out in 2020, why, are we, why have we got such awful mental health, like use of mental health? So yeah, I just found it lazy and a bit dull and then offensive. So DNF this one, definitely not for me, hated it. I've not logged it on Goodreads. Um, I did say that I'd started reading it and I just deleted it off my shelf and I won't be trying any others because this was bad. It's still the 21st of November and as you can see I'm now in my pyjamas, got all like snuggly and cosy because I just feel a bit pants today. Um, yeah, so I'm getting got comfy for the day and I've just had a knock at the door and I've had a delivery from Book Break who have sent me a uh, sister song by Lucy Holland. This is an arc that I requested, it comes out in April 2021 um, and basically the way it was described is that if you like Cersei you'll like this and that made me request it immediately. First of all, this cover is glorious. I think on the back is what the final cover will look like which is the same but in blue. Um, yeah, and obviously I haven't read this yet, so I will just read you a little bit at the back so you know what it's about. It says, Betrayal, Magic, Murder. That sounds awesome already. I'm in. It says, King Cador's children inherit a war-torn land abandoned by the Romans. River can cure others but can't heal her own scars. Cain, I think? Battles to be seen as the king's son, although born a daughter. Sin drives... Sin? Sinny, maybe? Dreams of love and longs for adventure. All three will become entangled in a web of treachery and heartbreak and must fight to forge their own paths. It's a story that will shape the destiny of Britain. A classic tale with modern sensibilities, this retelling of an ancient British folk ballad will tug at the heartstrings and stir the imagination. If you loved Madeleine Miller's Circe, you will love this. So yeah, thank you very much, Book Break. I am excited to get into this. <laughs> It's the 23rd of November and you're joining me in my super glamorous background today. I'm working from home today, I've got a uni day so I'm just going to be in my little office all day and as always I'm looking super glamorous with my fluffy hair but I did finish, I think it's my, I think it's the final door for Thousand Doors Readathon um, and that was Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. So we all know how I feel about The 13th Tale which I read, reread back in the summer and it's definitely going to be on my favourite books of the year list. Um, and so I hadn't read any other Diane Setterfields because I do this thing where if I really, really love a book by an author, I get really scared to pick up any of their others. So I'm going to take my glasses off because I've got major glare today. Okay, that's better. Yeah, it makes me kind of scared to pick up anything else in case I hate it. Um, but I decided to be brave and pick up another one of her books. She's got three out. This is the third. I haven't been able to find a copy of the second one yet. Um, this again hits historical fiction and we open in a country pub where everyone is drinking one night and then and it's it's the shortest day of the year and the door bangs open and in the doorway is a man who is badly injured and holding the body of a dead child. Um, they obviously jump up to help him, um, they call a nurse to come and sort the man out, they put the body of the little girl um, in their cold room and a few hours later she wakes up. And nobody knows who she is, she doesn't speak, they don't know where she's come from, they work out very quickly, she doesn't belong to the man that brought her in, um, he'd rescued her. And it basically just goes from there, and this is a big book, this is 500 pages, I'm going to swap palms, this is, it's a 500 page book, and we go from that opening scene in the pub with the mystery, and we then go into the village and we meet, I think it's about half a dozen different characters and their families, and at first I was a bit like, where is this going because I want to get back to the mystery but as things unravel you see how everything connects up and I absolutely adored this book I thought it was beautifully done Diane Sidfield's writing is just gorgeous and if you like historical fiction you really really need to be reading her um yeah it was beautifully done and it's about family and it's about grief and I just I just thought it was gorgeous um I've given it four out of five stars it wasn't quite the five star for me it was just missing that little something extra to push it into a five but I did thoroughly thoroughly enjoy myself and I'm so glad that I was brave and picked it up and yeah let's see what the next door is if there is one okay we're back on Lauren's video let's see what's gonna happen next 
finished your books and you finished your prompts. There's just one more thing for you to do. One last door to go through. The one that says finished. See you on the other side. This is so exciting. I love this Rubicon. Let's see what we got. Hey everyone! Hey everyone! <laughs> Hi everyone! Congratulations on finishing the first ever Thousand Doors Readathon. We hope you've had loads of fun. We've really enjoyed hosting and participating in it ourselves. And that's all thanks to you and our incredible guest hosts for making this such a magical experience. Please do comment down below what you've read and what you've thought of everything. And if you've vlogged, make sure you post the link down below so we can see it ourselves. Remember, there will be randomly selected prize winners for vlogging and also for generally just taking part. Thank you again so much for taking part. We worked so hard on this, so many FaceTimes, and seeing you all take part on social media has been so rewarding. We'd love to do another round of the Thousand Doors Readathon at some point, so let us know if that is something you would be interested in. Remember, stay inside, stay safe, tell your loved ones that you're thinking of them. And we hope you read many more amazing books in the future. Congratulations! You've completed the first ever Thousand Doors Readathon! I hope you've had an incredible time. We've had so much fun hosting this. You've made it so much fun by interacting with us on social media. Thank you for sending all of your vlogs. We've had the best time, honestly. And it's all because of you. Yay, I finished, I completed the readathon and I had a really good time. Thank you so much, ladies. It was brilliant. It was so fun. Um, kind of not knowing what I was going to read next and it was such a creative way of doing it so you've all done a fabulous job and yay that is that is the readathon complete it's still the 23rd of November I'm just on a break from uni and I had two things to tell you one I realized I just watched the last clip back I didn't say my covid test came back as negative so thankfully I do not have covid which is good massive relief just a normal book standard cold which is fine we can deal with that um, and secondly I've had a present sent to me uh, it obviously came in an Amazon box and I have ordered some stuff for other people for Christmas from Amazon so I thought it was one of those, ripped into it and it's a gift and somebody sent me this beautifully wrapped gift. Now I'm a bit worried that it's a Christmas present but I don't want to open, as soon as I open this it will tell me who it's from and also what it is. So I'm going to open it and if it is a Christmas present thank you so much. If it's just a another general present, thank you so much as well. Um, yeah, if it's if it is a Christmassy one, I will save the book definitely for December or, or a bit later in the in like the start of January. Um, but yeah, let's find out. Let's see who it's from because I'm just dying to know. And also, how beautiful is this? And it's all like been done with green ribbon. I do love, I do love the gift wrapping that Amazon does. Who is this from? Oh, I'm not your. <laughs> I'm not your secret Santa, but I wanted to give you a little something to say thank you for organising. Have a wonderful winter season from Thomas, who I think is on Twitter or Instagram. So um, for those of you that don't know, I'm running a bookish or have run a bookish secret Santa on Twitter and Instagram this year. Did it last year as well and it was so much fun. Um, and oh, this is very sweet of you. Thank you. Right, let's get into it. It was really like tied securely. Um, can I get in? There we go. Right, let's see. Ooh. Okay. It's wrapped very nicely. Like I said, I do like the gift wrap element. Oh, it's hardback. What is this? <gasps> I can still, I've suddenly seen it through the paper. Oh my goodness. <gasps> it's a song of Wraith and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. Oh, I'm so excited for this book. I have already set my December TBR, but I might have to squeeze this onto it. Gosh, it's gorgeous. Look at this. Okay, this is very exciting, thank you very much. Um, I think it's a fantasy, well, it's a fantasy book and I've heard loads of people talking about it and I put it on my wish list because I was like, that looks really cool. And I could, yeah, thank you very much. This is a really beautiful gift. So yeah, thank you very much. It's the 24th of November. I have finished one book. I've got a bookmark that I read to show you and somebody sent me a present. So I've got a few things to chat about. And yes, you can see some of Charlie's birthday presents behind me. He is 11 on Saturday. Uh, which, uh, not Yeah, he's 11 on Saturday, which I just 
can I get my brain around? Anyway, we're gonna go quick before the light goes really bad. So first of all, the book that I finished was Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. Um, this is the illustrated interactive edition by Mina Lima. I was very kindly gifted this by Mary at Mary Among Stories for my birthday uh, because I've been collecting these editions. It was actually um, Mary who first told me about these. Um, she mentioned them, I think, in a haul video, and I immediately put all of the editions that are on my wish list and have been gradually collecting them. And they are just such gorgeous objects. Um, this one, I didn't really know that much about because aside from the Disney film, I'd never read the original story of Pinocchio. And it was odd. <laughs> it was pretty dark in the way that fairy tales usually are, the original versions. I thoroughly enjoyed the interactive elements and as I always say when I review these books, I'm not going to show you any of those because I feel like the interactive elements are part of the experience of reading it and I don't want to spoil that. But I had a fantastic time reading this, it's gorgeous. Um, the interactive elements are so clever as they always are with the Mina Lima books and yeah, it's an odd little story but I had a great time reading it so I give them that four out of five stars so thank you very much Mary for sending this to me I thoroughly enjoyed it and it's just such a gorgeous object to have in my collection so thank you then um I have just filmed a very messy uh, unboxing for my bookstagram um which is always linked in the description so if you want to see the full thing jump over there and have a look but basically my wonderful friend uh, Leanne from Literary Diversions who has an Etsy store called Novel Menagerie did a Christmas release a couple of weeks ago I think it was about two weeks ago and I bought way too much stuff uh, but I'm so happy with what's arrived and I just thought I would very quickly show you just the bookmarks I did also order the Christmas mystery box which had stickers and um, gift tags and all kinds of lovely things in it but I just thought I'd very very quickly show you so if you want to see fully like I said pop over to my Instagram where it'll be on my grid but I, I got this uh, Shakespeare bookmark which is glorious lights horrible sorry Leanne I'm doing the best I can uh, this Raul Dahl one which I'm just waiting for it to focus, there we go, which is lovely, and then, I, and then I got a whole load of the fabric ones. So I went for the blue Matilda with the pink tassel, look how gorgeous that colour combination is. I got, I don't know if these are going to show up, oh yeah they are, paperclip, yellow paperclip one, because English teacher forever using paperclips. I got this gorgeous driving home for Christmas one with the red tassel, which I think is probably my favourite one out of these. Then I got the doggy two pack, so this one, which has got, I think it's probably a Scotty and a French Bulldog uh, and presents and stuff on it, I thought it was cute. And then the dog bone with the footprints, paw prints on it and then white tassel, they always look so glorious together. And then this one, which has got the deer on it with the robins, I think that's my second favourite one. I just, I'm a sucker for this colour scheme as well. And I really like the bronze tassel. And then the last one, she did a co collaboration with her friend Alice. And it's this gorgeous, there were a few different fabrics that were used, but the one that was picked for me um, was the badger one with this beautiful, like plum fabric, absolutely glorious. So thank you very much. So those are all the way too many bookmarks that I bought from Leanne. And I've got a massive collection. And then finally, got home to some parcels open them because I've been ordering stuff for other people and got as far as this and realised somebody sent me a gift. So let's find out together who that was and exactly what they sent me. Ooh, ooh, oh, okay. So the first one is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which is a great choice for this time of year. Look how cute that cover is. I love it. I love these editions. When I get enough of them, I'm gonna put a little shelf up in our hallway. Um, and put them all together so there's that one and the, oh, the Secret Garden by Fra Francis Hodgson Burnett and again look at that glorious edition absolutely stunning right who is this from oh okay so it's from my Secret Santa because I've I think I said this before in this video possibly. I'm running a secret Santa anyway on Twitter and Instagram and um, Kerry from Kerry Louise Reads is my secret Santa. So she sent me these for my secret Santa gift which is so lovely. Thank you Kerry. I will obviously now go and thank her properly. Um, but thank you, these were great choices and my collection is rapidly growing. It's the 26th of November and on my way home from work this evening I have finished uh, reading on audiobook Black Tudors by Miranda Kaufman. Um, this is a non-fiction book and as you would guess from the title it is a day, kind of a discussion and investigation 
of the black people who were present in England during the Tudor and early Stuart period. And it was interesting. Um, it definitely challenges the kind of modern preconceptions that the only black people that would have been here at that time would have been slaves, because uh, that definitely wasn't the case. And this looks at 10 individual case studies of uh, black people who were recorded as living here during that time. Um, and it looks at, it kind of speculates on how they would have got here. It looks at the information that we do have about what they were doing at the time, what um, occupation they had, and then also looking, because most of the information comes from death certificates and like will wills and their probate, um, looking at like what kind of, what we can tell from the things that they owned at the end of their lives. Sorry, I'm really tired as you can probably tell. So yeah, there was a lot of information and it definitely was interesting. I would recommend the audiobook because I really like the narrator. I think the only problem with it is it's a little bit dry. Um, and in the author's note at the end, the author does say that this started out as her doctorate. So it very much feels like an academic text. And I think if I tried to read it physically, I think I would have struggled a lot more. On audio, it's fine. Um, but it's a lot of like dates. So this and this date and this happened and this and this date and that happened. Um, so yeah, I've given it three stars. It was interesting. It's definitely something that is worth reading about and knowing about, obviously, within English history. Uh, but the way this was done, it wasn't my favourite. Do you want to say hello to booktube? He's such a handsome boy. Hey? Okay, that's enough. <laughs> it is the 28th of November, which means that today is Charlie's 11th birthday. Don't know quite how that happened. For those of you who don't know, I have a stepson called Charlie who has turned 11 today. Um, I'm also having a very weird fringe day. Let's just sort that out. Yeah, so it's Charlie's birthday today and He's gone out to see a friend of his because he's 11 now and that's what they do. Um, and so I thought I'd take advantage of the empty house and just film briefly. I haven't finished any books since I last checked in, but I have been sent quite a few books by some absolutely lovely people within the book community. So I thought I would show you because I have been filming when I'm opening them, but I'm always opening them when I'm exhausted and it's dark because I've just got home from work. So I thought I'd film like a, a nicer clip for this vlog. So first of all, the wonderful Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe sent me Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare. Uh, she knows that I'm collecting uh, the Macmillan Library editions and her and I both have a shared love of Shakespeare so she sent me Julius Caesar so thank you very much Olivia um, actually the day I'm filming this I've just been watching her ranking Shakespeare plays video so I will link that in the description because it was a really really good one and so much effort went into making that video so yeah go check that out and check her out she's absolutely lovely and thank you so much for this Olivia this is helping me grow my collection so thank you I was then really spoiled by a friend of mine called Jenny, um, who sent me The Year of the Flood by Margaret Atwood in this fantastic edition. And you can't see them now because of the angle of the camera, but it matches the other. Um, so this is part of the Mad Adam trilogy and this matches the other two books I have in that series. So thank you so much, Jenny. I'm really excited to read this edition. I've read it before, but I'm gonna read this edition when we read this book in the new year, so thank you. And then she also sent me some sweets. She sent me the Eaton Mess candy kittens, which I love and also the sour watermelon ones, which I also really enjoy. So thank you so much, Jenny. That was just such a spoil. Oh, hi, Jack's come across because he's seen these. He thinks they're for him. These aren't dreamies. These are for me. He's like, yeah, I think these are for me. They're really not. So yeah, she sent those to me with this really lovely note, um, basically just thanking me for organizing the Secret Santa. And now the cat's down here trying to get into the, into the sweets. Welcome to having a cat. Get away from those, they're not for you. And then my secret Santa, the person buying for me, obviously I knew who it was because I drew the secret Santa, but um, they picked two fantastic books for me. So my secret Santa was Kristen, who is at Kristen Reads, and I will link her in the description. She sent me, first of all, she sent me The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith, which I've never read and I feel like I should because it's kind of a modern classic mystery thriller book. I have seen the film, so I know how the plot goes, but I'm really intrigued to read this. And actually, it's really short. I thought it'd be longer than this. It's just over 250 pages. Now the cat, yeah, the cat, trying to film this with the cat in the room was not my best plan. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for that. I'm really excited for this. And then she sent me, like, when I, when I have books on my wish list, obviously they're all books that I would like, but some I'm more excited about than others. And she managed to pick one that I was like the one that I was most excited about. And that is Blue Ticket by Sophie McIntosh. So Sophie McIntosh wrote The Water Cure, which I read last year, 
possibly the year before and it was a weird reading experience that's a really weird book but it's also one that stuck with me and the quality of the writing for a debut was just amazing this is her next book and this has been like into the handmaid's tale we all know how i feel about being books like into the handmaid's tale because it never is but this i'm just going to read you a little bit of the synopsis because this sounds so interesting Calla knows how the lottery works everyone does but what if the life you're given is the wrong one on the, first, on the day of your first bleed, you report to the station to learn what kind of woman you will be. A white ticket grants you children. A blue ticket grants you freedom. You, re you are relieved of the terrible burden of choice. And once you've taken your ticket, there is no going back. And that, I'm just so, in I'm so intrigued by this book. And if you follow me on Twitter, by the way, all of my social media links are always in the description of videos, um, you'll have seen that I plan to spend the first day of the school holidays which i think is like the 21st of december something like that it's a monday um gary still has to work that week so i've like got time off on my own which hasn't happened all year i don't think and i plan to spend the first day of the holidays just literally curled up on the sofa with a blanket and the cat and i want to read a whole book in the day and i think this is the book i'm gonna have to pick because i'm just so like rabid to read it so thank you so much for sending these to me these were brilliant picks and yeah i've just been um pretty spoiled this week. It's the 30th of November, I've been at school all day, so the lighting's terrible and I look a state. But I finished two books and I was very kindly gifted another book. So we're gonna do this quickly and yes, Amazon parcels from stuff I've ordered for Christmas. Anyway, the first book that I have finished is The North Water by Ian Maguire. This was one of the books that my brother gifted me for my birthday. If you guys aren't aware, um, he gifted me five uh, literary fiction books for my birthday and I've been reading one a month. Um, this one is historical fiction. We are in 1859 and we're following a man who joins a whaling ship as the surgeon um, and things kind of go from there. This was gruesome. I think that's probably the best word I can use to describe it. It is very, very violent. It's incredibly violent. It's incredibly visceral. It is not for the faint hearted. Um, I've given it a four out of five. I thought it was well paced. Um, I enjoyed the kind of depiction of life on a whaling boat that we got. Um, I, yeah, I flew through it fairly quickly. I would just be very careful picking this up. There is a lot of uh, homophobic language. There is some racist language. Uh, there is also um, two rapes and two murders of children and they are very detailed. Uh, and then also when one of the bodies is found, that is also very detailed. So just be aware going in. Um, yeah, this one was creepy and atmospheric and weird. And I thought it was really well done. So there was that one. And then the other book, and I'm going to swap hands because this arm is going dead already, was entirely different. And that was Boy Queen by George Lester. And this was gifted to me by my lovely friend Laura from what everyone else is reading for my birthday. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much what it says on the tin. This is a YA contemporary about a boy named Robin who basically discovers drag and becomes a drag queen. And it was fun. It was written this year and it's a debut. And also George Lester is also a, book, a YouTuber. Um, it was fun. It's got some really lovely messages about being yourself in it. It's got, um, it deals with a toxic relationship, which I thought was good. I think for me, the only thing was it felt a little bit basic and I think it's because it's a debut I would definitely read more from him um and I feel like there's a lot of places his writing could go but yeah this felt a little bit basic it was a little bit plot by numbers uh but I still enjoyed it and had a great time gave it four stars and then finally I was very very kindly gifted by my friend Simone this arrived yesterday after I'd already filmed or was that the day before when I filmed anyway this arrived yesterday I didn't feel like filming um and she sent me it's it's not about the burka which is edited by Mary Mariam Khan I have wanted to read this book since I joined booktube I saw Harriet from Harriet Rosie Reads talking about it probably at least last year if not before um and I just am really intrigued by this this is I think it's 17 um essays 17 different Muslim women have written essays on what it is like to be a Muslim woman today in the UK. And yeah, I'm just really, really excited to put this up. So thank you, Simone. I've been looking forward to reading this for ages and I can't wait to get to it. And those are all the books I read in November. So on the day of filming this, it's the 1st of December. I have still not cut my fringe because there is just no time for everything these days. Uh, but yeah, I'm here to just kind of wrap up the wrap up. So November has been a pretty good reading month, I think. Um, 
I have been juggling in my real life, as most of you will know, because I don't shut up about it. I'm doing a PGCE. Uh, I'm currently in my first placement, and this month was when I kind of took over properly uh, with my two year seven groups and started to take over with year nine. So my workload has suddenly shot up. Uh, I am thoroughly enjoying myself, but it does mean that I quite often get home and I'm so tired I can barely think. Uh, so my reading has definitely dropped. Let's do the stats. So I did, I've completed 14 books, which I, I know is a lot of books to finish in a month. Um, Booktube is a weird place because off of Booktube, if you said that you'd completed, I don't know, six books in a month, most people would look at you and say, wow, that's loads. But here on Booktube, we've got so many like overachievers who read 20 or 30 books in a month. Sometimes I look at my stats and I'm like, mm, 14. But I know that any reading is good reading, so we're going with that. So 14 books, which totaled 5,010 pages or 167 pages a day. So my reading rate has dropped, but not as much as I expected it to. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. It's dropped a little bit, but not as much as I thought it would. Um, and I've really enjoyed what I've read this month, which is obviously the key. Uh, my average star rating is 4.28. So it's been a good reading month. Um, and a good month in general, really. I think for me, because I'm working in a school, the second lockdown didn't really impact me that much. I was still going to work as normal. Um, and we haven't really come out of the first lockdown, to be honest. Um, so outside of work, we weren't like, I wasn't going to restaurants or anything like that. So yeah, it didn't really affect me. And I, I feel very lucky because I know a lot of people really struggled with it. Um, for me, there was really only one book that I could choose for book of the month. And that was Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Um, as you saw in the clip where I review this, I absolutely loved this. I thought when I saw it coming out that it was a book written for me. And it was absolutely the, one of the most beautiful things. Absolutely smashed my heart to pieces. And I'm so glad I've read it. So yeah, those were the books that I read in the month of November. If you watch to this point, uh, leave me an acorn emoji. Is that a thing? I think it is, it's something autumnal. Just pick one of those and leave that in the comments so I know that you made it to the end. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys, bye.